a crochet and welcome to Friday fun. Um, we got a lot going on today and I owe you guys the song. So let me go ahead and get that out of the way. And just to let you know, I, I am doing the, the matching funds for that. Last week we went over, I believe it was $120 and that will be going to the Rancho 3M. Um, I've already sent in my matching funds to Samaritan's Purse. They have been doing a lot of relief, both in Kentucky and now, you know, Florida. So whew, there's a lot going on. And as, as we go live, um, you're not going to see Hannah in the chat today. She just felt a little bit overwhelmed. Um, and partly because she's got a lot of responsibility there in South Carolina. And currently they are getting a visit from Hurricane Ian. So um, if you think of her, I mean, I, they should be fine. I don't, I don't anticipate um, too much trouble from this storm. Um, since um, when it hit Florida, I believe it was just, I think it was a, 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 um, a four, a number four, category four. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, and of course, whenever they go over land, they do tend to weaken as this one has, but it also spent some time out in the warmer waters of the Atlantic and has strengthened back to a, 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 a category one, which is pretty common in this area, but there's always the potential of bad things to happen. So I think, thank you for thinking of her and for praying, um, for her. I really, really do appreciate that. It was, um, supposed to go get my kids in Georgia, but it looks like it didn't even come near them because it took more of a, an easterly route. So, well, anyway, let's go ahead. I was going to play a, one of my um, favorite hymns for you on my trusty little whistle here in D. So let me go ahead and do that. This is my thank you for, for your generosity. And um, let me just go ahead and play. This is one of my favorite songs. It's um, Be Thou My Vision. And hopefully I won't squeak it too much. It does get a little loud and high. So just warn you, if you want to turn your volume down, that would probably be a good time to do it. you like that it's one of my favorites uh, and I love 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 the words to that so anyway guys lots and lots and lots going on let me go ahead and just say hey to everybody or, or to some of you before we um, jump into some of the goodies I want to show you um, Sandra thank you so much for being there this morning waiting patiently and Marie Proudfoot thank you um, hope you guys are doing okay Marie is right in the path of this storm as we speak so I'm glad to see that you still have power. I talked to Hannah. She's, they still got power. Things are fine there. Just please pray for her. She's just got a lot going on. And, um, and just so it turns out, they got a brand new roof. So I, I left just in time for all the hammering to start. Hannah had to live through that for a few days. But um, So this is going to be a real test to see how well the roofers did on this new roof. So I, I, I really do hope they did their, their job well. And we have Nanny. Lanny loves to crochet. Um, she says it's wet, very wet and windy here in the UK. Oh boy. Oh goodness. Um, we just got another super chat in. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Archer Nace. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and write that down in my little note place here. Um, okay, it was $115. Okay, I went ahead and sent $120. But anyway, 
So let me go ahead and put that towards our next, um, our next gift. Um, so just to let you all know, whenever I see super stickers or super, super chat, um, donations that this does go to charities. Uh, I just feel like that's just what I need to do with that. Um, and, and again, every penny, um, every penny, I, I just look at that amount and that's exactly what I add up and send in. And, and as long as I can, I'm going to try to double that, um, do my matching funds, um, to Samaritan's Purse because they do such amazing, um, relief both in the U S and outside. As you know, we've been supporting them also, um, with their Ukraine, uh, hospital due to that situation. But anyway, so, um, we have Judy. Um, she says, hi, happy Friday. Thank you for your instruction here at Bonnie Bank Crochet. My pleasure, Judy. I love doing this. And she said, I just gifted another spring lace in cable throw and made someone very happy. I appreciate you. Oh, Judy, that is so sweet. That is so wonderful. You guys are such givers. Um, you know this pattern better than I do at this point because I've only made one of them. Um, and that was also a gift to a family. Um, in our church that I, I love. They had moved away and, and I was able to leave that for them as a special gift. Um, and you just, you know how it is with the, being a crocheter and giving your work away. It just makes you happy. So thank you for doing that. And then we have Red Hook. So good to see you in the chat again and love to craft. And Wanda, I hope you, I hope you don't get too much of this, Wanda. You're there in the Carolinas in Bahama, North Carolina. She said, praying everyone will be safe today. Thoughts and prayers for everyone in Florida. Absolutely. Um, we have some friends who, oh, I can't even talk about it. Oh, it's my home state and um, where I was born and raised down in Florida. And we know hurricanes, unfortunately. Uh, I remember seeing the devastation. Ooh. In 92, I think I was, it was... Andrew hit in 92. You remember that Homestead, Florida. My cousin um, still lives in Homestead, Florida. But he lost everything that night that that storm hit. And seven months later, I got to see, got to visit. I mean, this was like seven months after the storm. And it was still just, just totally devastated. And um, instead of the rubble strewn everywhere, it was just piled in big piles. That was the main difference. Um, so, yeah. And I saw pictures coming out of... Um, Coral, Cape Coral, and some other places that looked, unfortunately, too familiar. So, guys, stay safe. Oh, I hope oh, I have so many friends and family there. I hope they're okay. But anyway, I think I think they are. I haven't heard any bad news. But um, we have really dear friends um, from. They used to be in our church here, and they moved down there. And um, uh, my husband's been in touch with them, and it's not good. <laughs> it's not good, guys. So thank you for your thoughts and prayers and, you know, and, and I usually don't solicit, you know, contribute to anything. I don't like to ask, but if you feel, if you feel your heart is inclined, you know, Samaritan's Purse is a really good organization if you wanted to just get in touch with them and, and designate the funds to Florida. I know that uh, it's, it's a trustworthy organization. I know sometimes you can't really know for sure, but um, I, I, I am hundred percent sure this is a, a great, a great place. But if you, if you're so inclined again, not soliciting that, but anyway, um, I sounded like I was, but you know what I'm saying? If you're so inclined and you want to be generous, um, they were a good place to start. All right. We have M Ms. Mrs. M Bresler. Um, she says, hi all. We're having a beautiful sun, shiny day in Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, I am so happy for you. Um, yeah, what what a fun place. I've never been to Las Vegas or or really to Nevada. I need to check that state off my list at some point. I'm so glad you're having having good weather there. Uh, we're going to be uh, starting to get some of the bands of this storm. We're not. I mean, we're probably just going to get a lot of rain, but um, not like what Hannah's getting right now. But um, yeah, uh, we're just going to be rainy here in just a bit. Uh, get to fill up our well again. We have Michelle. In the chat says, good morning, good, beautiful morning, Bonnie, and everyone else here. Rainy in central Montana today. Wow. And Heather um, says, good morning. We've been praying hard for all impacted by the last couple hurricanes. Yeah, thank you, Heather. That is such a good thing to do. And Brad's mom, so good to have you in the chat, Linda. Um, from pleasant, sunny and pleasant southwest Chicago suburbs. 
said, I can't be with you today visiting an elderly friend. Well, that's a wonderful thing to do. Um, and she said, don't forget, even she, though she's not here, she's like reminding me to hit that thumbs up. If you can, that would be great. It helps the little bots to do what they do in the background so that more people get to learn about this channel and learn how to crochet. And um, Michelle, thank you so much for that thumbs up. And Jane um, from West Springfield, Massachusetts, she's praying for friends in Florida and family in North Carolina. Yeah, thank you so much, Jane. And, and South Carolina is really the, the, the bullseye right now. It's just... It's kind of funny. It, people forget that there are two Carolinas sometimes, but that I'm not saying that you're doing that, Jane, but um, it's just kind of funny. Whenever people have known me for like 30 years, whenever I travel back, oh, you're going back to North Carolina? And I'm like, well, I'll be passing through North Carolina on the way to South Carolina. There is this another one down there, and um, it's a pretty nice place to be um, when you're not getting a hurricane. <laughs> so anyway... Uh, we have Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. And um, thank you, Wanda, for your prayers for Hannah and Grandma Barker. And Denise is going to have you in the chat. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And Diane and Harriet Cutter. So good to have you, my friend. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for those prayers, Linda, for Hannah and Grandma Barker. Um, and Red Hook, thank you. And Rochelle from Arizona. <laughs> she's like you're so talented ah you guys are so sweet <laughs> thank you um yeah i'm spending a lot of time doing this i i really enjoy what i do right now um it's so blessed to be to be in a place where i get to say hey to you guys and uh, oh thank you wanda and and everybody for your comments um love the music thank you i i love playing i really do want to play more uh, I was listening to some music this week and was just so inspired to get out my guitar again. And I need to start trying to do more recordings. I know I've started a, another channel. It's called um, Sapphire, Sapphire Freeway. And if you look at that, you'll notice that I haven't been able to post much, like, at all, like, in more than a year. I need to do more. I really, 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 really want to do more with that. It's just all a matter of time. I need to get off the road and stay home once in a while. Uh, but, uh, and as you all know, I'm getting ready to be gone in October. I'm starting um, mid-October through mid-November. I'll go ahead and let you know that now. Um, don't know what Friday funds are going to look like. It just depends on where I am and whether there's an internet connection. And I'm gonna be five hours ahead of you guys at one point and probably more <laughs> depending on where we are um so i'm going to be doing a cruise to israel and the mediterranean really really looking forward to it it's um a learning teaching kind of a thing i think i've told you about it before but i i really do hope if we have a decent internet in rome that's where we're starting i, I really hope to be able to broadcast in two weeks in two weeks if it all goes well um uh I hope to be in Rome in two weeks with my husband. This is a trip that's been delayed for more than two years um, to help celebrate his 60th um, birthday, which of course he's much older than that now. <laughs> we all are. And, um, and getting close to my 60th as well. So anyway, so um, it, I'll be closer to my 60th birthday than to his. Uh, actually just um, several, just a few months away. But um, anyway, so looking, looking forward to... Um, to that and seeing what I can find. I, I'm really going to be going with an eagle eye for fiber as well for, you know, yarn and fiber. A lot of your yarn, if you notice um, and read, you know, read the labels, you'll find that they're, it, it's often manufactured either in Italy or Turkey. And I'm going to be able to see both of those places. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, learning about, you know, more about yarn as I go. In fact, the, the yarn that this is made of was actually manufactured in Turkey. Um, so I'm really hoping to, you know, learn more. Uh, let's see. Thank you so much, Laura, for your prayers. Yeah. Prayer for praying for Florida and all of us still in Ian's path. Absolutely. Um, like I said, the pictures coming out of central Florida were not encouraging at all. Um, anyway, Oh, thank you. Thank you for your kind comments and, and your prayers, Denise and, and Wanda. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Wanda, for praying for Marie. <laughs> She's right there now. It's 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 happening 
probably all around here right now. And um, and Jackie, we have Jackie Johnson from Muskegon, Michigan. I hope I didn't butcher that name. Um, says hope everyone's having probably a great day. Yes. Um, and Arch Ternace, thank you so much for your kind words. Yeah, you're actually able to stay today. Yay, Terry. I just um, had so much fun meeting you. I just, um, I still have your, just to show you, I still have your flowers. And in, in case you missed the broadcast last week, I hope you don't mind. I gave one to Bobby. I told them Terry made me these and I felt like you would be fine if I gave him one. So he has one in his little room there at the nursing home. So thank you again. Um, just trying to, trying to spread the love a little bit where I can. And, um, oh, wow, Archer and Ace is going to be in the same place with Jackie next weekend. Wow, Buster Keaton Convention? You've got to be kidding me. Really? Oh, my goodness. I didn't know there was such a thing. I have to tell my kids now. Um, I need to write that down. Let me write that down. Hold on. Because um, let me write that down. Buster Keaton. A convention. Wow. In Muskegon, Michigan. My kids are going to have to put that on their on their radar if that's a recurring thing. Um, some of my kids are, are, are such, um, well, they're cinematic arts graduates from a college level. And, and Buster Keaton is one of our all-time favorites. For those of you who don't know who Buster Keaton is, he made um, black and white silent film great, in, in my opinion. I think he is the best. <laughs> um, even, even in my opinion, better than some of the more popular black and white um, silent movie people. But um, like, well, Charlie Chaplin, of course, is you know is is actually excellent too. But um, Keaton has my heart. He's he is the he is he is so wonderful. So I hope you enjoy that. That's gonna be fun. And um, we have oh, we have um, let me go back to that comment. Uh, Leslie from Australia. Hey, Leslie, so good to have you with us. Um, she's like, so sorry to see all that has happened. Thoughts with everyone affected. I cannot imagine. S stay safe, everyone. Well, Leslie, you guys had all those fires not too long ago. So, I mean, my, our hearts were, were, wow, we're just going out for you. Oh, thank you, Jeannie. She's just reminding everybody to hit the thumbs up button. I never remember these things. Thank you for being my administrative support there. Um, it's so good to see you in the chat. I hope you're feeling better. Um, I, I hope you're home now. I don't know how much I can really say, but um, I, I hope you're feeling better. Um, please, please send me an email. I'd love to find out more about what's going on. Um, we have Denise says that my grandson is at school in Nova Scotia. Fiona came through and they lost power. Thank God all were, they were all safe. Yeah. Oh, Fiona. Um, Denny, Denise, I, you know, having been raised in Florida and also, Having lived in South Carolina, those are two big places that get so many of these storms. I could tell you story after story. Um, I still remember um, Hugo, Hurricane Hugo. That was terrible. My sister Brenda went through that. And I think they had, um, this was the storm that was just supposed to stay along the coast. And this thing plowed with over 100 mile an hour uh, sustained winds. That means winds that are continuous. That's not the gust. This Hugo barrel all the way up even into Charlotte and did a lot of, I mean, Charlotte, if you look at a map, is way inland and these storms are supposed to weaken as they go on land because they're away from their fuel, from their warm water. And if they didn't, this one didn't weaken much. It just was so well formed. It just barreled right up through to Charlotte because a lot of my friends that I knew, people I knew live in the Char Charlotte area and even in, in some in Columbia, but uh, a lot of people from, um, Charlotte from, um, from Charleston evacuated to, to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and the storm followed them, and, and, and just, it was devastating. So, I mean, you just never know what's going to happen with these things. So, but, but thank you for your, your comments there. I'm glad that your family was safe with that. And I remember one that hit up in, um, in New York, and my son was involved in relief. Um, that, I believe that was Hurricane Sandy. I mean, Oh, heart wrenching. I mean, in a hit in a time, um, the week after the Sandy hit New York, right along the edge there, um, and my son, our church, 
took up trailers of, of stuff, you know, to help with them. And um, people couldn't even get out of their homes, uh, people in a nursing home, because the elevators didn't work and people had to run up and down stairs taking them food. And then within a week, they got a, a blizzard. So, I mean, really wild stuff can happen this time of the year. You have to really pay attention to the weather. Um, and Marlene says it's sun shining in Ohio. That's so happy for you, Marlene. And um, yeah, thank you, Denise, again for your prayers. And, and um, Tracy, it's so good to have you in the chat. Uh, happy birthday to you. Well, Tracy, happy birthday. Wow. I hope you enjoy the day. And I hope you're not in the path of a storm. I hope you can get out and get some birthday cake and enjoy yourself. Maybe have someone take you out for supper. Um, I don't need an excuse to do that anymore. <laughs> um, and let's see, we have Mrs. Debbie LW. Oh, thank you, Debbie. She says she likes my sweater. Thank you. This is going to be coming to the channel sometime soon. I believe in November. It's already, it's been on the watch channel for a number of months. It's very similar to the, um, to the summer version of this, but just to let you know, the numbers are a little bit different. I use different yarn and yes, it does make a difference. And, um, and it's one of these things that's very easily sizable to any, um, to any shape and size, as long as you're paying attention. Um, and, and this is, this is already up in my Lovecraft store. So if you want to get a jump on it, you can, but it, the actual instruction, instructional video is coming to my public channel, um, very soon. Like I said, sometime in November, I think maybe the first or second week, um, or maybe sooner, maybe it's October. Ooh, let me check the calendar. Hold on a second. I can't keep all this stuff in my head. I have too many holes in my head. It kind of leaks out. Um, okay, the 17th of October is when I have it scheduled for. So October 17th, this will be coming to my YouTube channel. And let's go ahead and talk about some of the other things. Let me show you, um, this is what was released this past week, this is a popcorn cow. And as with cows, you can put it over like this and it can keep you nice and cozy and warm. And of course, you know, wearing a nice, like a coat, once the weather gets to be coat weather, you can wear a coat, of course, over this. And it's really, it's an easy on, easy off, you know, kind of a thing. You don't have to, you know, fool with, you know, the ends of the scarves. Um, and getting tangled as you go into the doors and you know things like that. Um, another one I've shown this to you before. This is coming to my channel. This is actually an easy pattern. This is something that I believe a beginner or a confident beginner. You can just add another. You know, learn how to do the bobbles. Add that to your tool set. This is a one skein or one cake wonder. I use the the number three weight uh, color changing yarn from I picked up at Walmart uh, and it's made by Lion Brand and, and um, you know it's very easy to you know to tie this and to wear it as a you know you can wear this as a scarf I can get the other side there you can easily wear this as a scarf and fit easily inside your coat and of course you got the shawl thing going as well. So if you're looking for, and also if you're looking for um, inexpensive, um, you know, budget-wise gifts for the holidays, I mean, if you know your friends would enjoy something like this, and I know chunky, chunky scarves like this are really in right now. I'm not one to normally to follow a lot of trendy kind of stuff because um, I like to make things that are going to be around a while, that are going to be, you know, something I can pull out in 10 years and still wear. I think I can still pull this out in 10 years and wear the sweater. And the same with, you know, the cables and things like, like the one, like the one behind me, you know, I, I don't see them going anywhere. At least I'm going to probably wear these kinds of things until I meet Jesus. I mean, I, I don't, I don't wait for things that I like, like ponchos behind me. Um, I don't wait for them to come in the style. If I like it, I wear it. And maybe, maybe I'm a trend center. I don't know. <laughs> and that, that, that joking, but anyway, so anyway, so this, you know, if you're looking for quick and easy and budget wise, um, projects for the holidays, um, this would be one. 
And, and what's also nice about this is this is uh, easy care. So it's not like it's made of real fancy yarn and they throw it in the washer and it's ruined. Um, they can put it that in the washer and the dryer. Although I don't put my things in the dryer. I just lay them flat to dry. But anyway, you can tell people that. But um, And also about that particular project, when people have asked, what can I do with some of these knit crate yarns? Well, here you go. This is the same project without the tassels and using some knit crate alpaca. And if you have yarn that's um, even smaller or larger than a number three yarn, you could give it a try and see if you like, you know, the fabric that it makes. I believe this was a number four weight. So, you know, it's, it's nice and soft and it's a way to use some of the knit crate yarn if you, you know, have some of that sitting around and you're just not sure what to do with it. Some of you may be wondering what that picture was about on the thumbnail. Remember with the yarn here? I don't normally do this, but I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek to something that I'm working on. It'll probably, this is going to, I'm shooting for a January release date. So it's not going to be released anytime soon. But if you wanted to put the yarn on your on your Christmas wish list, when people always ask you, what do you want for Christmas? And um, I know it may sound tacky to some people, but, you know, just say, hey, you know, I might like some yarn from this yarn company. You know, give them a link. Send them a link saying, hey, give me two of these. <laughs> um, but this is a yarn comp. This, this is really nice yarn. It is, let me, let me tell you what it is. I have the label right here. It's from Leather Company. This is 85% Superwash Merino and 15% Donegal. This is 400 yards. Um, and when I purchased this, this might have been a special price, but I'm not sure. I paid $26, um, or this is $26 a hank, which in my estimation, is a very good price for hand-dyed quality tweed yarn. And this is the name of the company, Leather. Let's see if it'll focus. Leather Company. So it's L-E-I. Let me go ahead and put the link. And if you if you do look them up, tell them Bonnie sent you. Um, I'll put the link right there. LeatherCompany.com. And um, so let me show you, this is what I'm working on. This is a new, a new stitch for me and I'm really enjoying it. Let me sure, make sure I show you the right side. Okay. It's really kind of reversible, but the, the little puff stitches show up. Look at this. Isn't this something where this yarn is coming out? The puff stitches really show up well with this. So let's, this is just a secret between you and me. Okay. <laughs> Um, so this is what I'm working on, and I I actually, let me show you, I actually had to rip, I've ripped this out twice now, and we've redone it um, two times. I'm on the third time, and hoping that the third time is the charm, and the reason I did that is I wanted the pattern to be as perfect as I can get, and of course nothing is perfect in this world, but um, I'm going to, I was trying to get as close as I can, and rather than just estimating um, I wanted to get it to where I was comfortable with it. So, so that's what that's all about. So that again, the yarn is um, Leather Company, and I'm using two or eight hundred yards for this project. Um, just wanted something that wasn't as chunky as some of the other things, and I love chunk. I love chunky uh, when it comes to um, texture and everything. But I just wanted to. To do something that was more lacy and, and that would kind of stretch the yardage just a little bit further. Um, and I think this is it and I'm really, really enjoying this. So now I just got to sit and pay attention <laughs> and not make any more mistakes. So, uh, let's see, who do we have here? We have Sarah Sarah um, from Lafayette, Louisiana. Ooh. So happy Friday to you and everyone here. Well, thank you, Sarah. Sarah, uh, I love that name, Lafayette. I'm a big uh, aviation enthusiast, and um, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Lafayette Escadrille. If you haven't, look it up online. Um, we're our, our family is just fascinated by um, by that 
particular group. It was actually the, the precursor to the United States Air Force or the Air Corps, I think is what they called it before that. But uh, before they had, we had the United States Air Force, we had the Lafayette Escadrille. And that was before the U.S. was in the, into World War I. And um, just in a nutshell, uh, there were a lot of, some pilots who, who felt like they wanted to help Europe even before our country threw the hat, threw their hat into the ring was the terminology used in World War I. And, um, and that's what they wanted to call themselves in honor of Lafayette who came to, to help Washington during the Revolutionary War. And I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. And um, he was trained, they were trained by a, a French American named Raoul Loofberry who should be a hundred times more famous than he is. Because <laughs> um, he's the one who created the, the Rickenbackers of, of our history. But anyway, he's the one who trained the, the um, American ace pilots. Uh, I just love the history of that. I'm getting off on a tangent here. Um, hey, Debbie Jones, she says it's the first time here. Sorry it took so long to get to your comment, but you are so welcome here. And um, let's see. Uh, Debbie, Fla Debbie Fowler um, says, good morning here. A little rainy in the northern part of in North Carolina. Wind is starting to blow right now. And it's a little chilly here. Uh, will you stay, stay safe, Beverly? You're going to be getting a lot of rain from this. Um, it's heading right your way, I think. And um, let's see, we have Linda um, from Oklahoma. She says, happy Friday. Yay. And... Um, you guys, I just love to see the conversation. Oh wow, um, Tracy says today is my 59th. Oh how cool! So we're we're kind of the same age, Tracy. I'm a little bit older than you, <laughs> but um, that is great. And I tell you what, 60 is coming, and I'm like, bring it on, bring it on. Not afraid, not scared, man. Uh, and congratulations. Enjoy your last year in the 50s before we head off into that new realm. Um, and let's see. Oh, you guys are so sweet. We have Crochet My Way with Wanda. Hey, Wanda, I hope you're staying safe. And I hope you're nowhere near the Carolinas or Florida right now. Oh, geez, I'm in California today. Read the rest of the, the comment, Bonnie. Yay. So you're in a good place, I think. <laughs> um, stay on that side. Don't come to the east for a while. Wait till EM blows out, out to sea. Um, all right. I just got a bunch of new comments loading. Oh, Jeannie wants to know if I'm going to Rhinebeck Sheep and Wolf Festival this year. Um, I'm going to be out of the country, Jeannie, so I won't be able to. I've never been to Rhinebeck. Um, I need to get that one checked off my list at some point. Um, are you going? Um, that would be, I've heard it's a pretty amazing place. Um, never been there though. Oh, thank you, Denise. She says, can't wait for the tutorial for that beautiful sweater. It's it's so it's so much easier than it looks. That's all I got to say. I love yoke sweaters now. They're my absolute favorite, both the summer and the winter. So you're gonna be seeing more of this style sweater from me in the future. I'm just sitting here thinking that this morning, what can I work on for the future? And I'm thinking I need to do more of these sweaters. And with this material, it just feels so amazing. Um, and it's by the way, this is made of a sock yarn, which is a number one weight. Very lightweight soft yarn, and yes, I make use of that waddle stitch. Just waddle, 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 waddle. Um, it's easy. Um, it it works, and um, and with the the wool, it's breathable. So even though it's it is a little chilly here, but um, I'm not overheated in any way, shape, or form by wearing a pullover sweater. See, Denise says I was in Palm Beach Shores, Florida, with my family when Wilma came through. We had to evacuate to Orlando. We got lots of wind and rain and had to stay inside for a day and a half. Yeah, these, these can be really crazy. You never know. Um, yeah, Wilma. I, I think Wilma is the one that brought all the flooding to South Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. Because what happened is, is the North Carolina part got hit and then all the water kind of ran south. And, and it brought tremendous flooding to the city where, where Hannah is right now. And so much so that my son, who was going to school nearby, couldn't get to school because 
uh, 501, if you guys are familiar with the roads in South Carolina along the beach, I mean, 501 was underwater. I mean, it was impassable for, for about, for, for a few weeks at least, I, I think more even, or more. Um, school was canceled for a couple of weeks. That's when he started school. And when he ended school, it was during the beginnings of COVID. Fun, fun, fun. We had to get that kid out of school. <laughs> it was a disaster waiting to happen. Um, thankfully, he's, he's graduated and he's doing, he's doing well in his work. So, yay. Um, and going backwards in the chat here, um, Wanda my, Crochet Done My Way says, I was in Concord, North Carolina when Hugo came through. Oh, my gosh. We were without power for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Hugo was bad. I remember that. That was bad. My sister was in, in Columbia, South Carolina, and they had they had lost power too. They had, they clocked 100, 100 mile an hour sustained winds at the top of the Bankers Trust building, which is a, a big uh, it, it, a building everybody knows if you know Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, Stephanie says, I'm going to begin with the, my favorite sports team, Poncho. That's the one right behind me. Um, I'll be using, I love this yarn size four. Can you tell me how much yarn I need of each color? Ugh, not off the top of my head, Stephanie, but if you look at the video, the yarn information should be there for you. I try to put that at the beginning of the video, um, so that, that there, there's no doubt. And it's definitely listed in the written pattern. If should you be interested in that. Oh, and Mandy says, hi, happy birthday. Have you a video for the hat in this picture, please? Actually, I do. Um, she's talking about, is it right here? The hat. Um, this is um, a long stocking fan cap, I believe is what I call it. I do have a single pattern. You can purchase all of these are in my Lovecraft stores, love store. And, um, and the information would be on my, my channel. If you want to bring up the video, you can go to playlist on my homepage and look for the playlist with the hats. It will be in that playlist, but that is also a design that's going to be in this book. This is um, I made some tweaks to this cover, um, but this is my proof, my first proof. I'm ordering another proof just to have visual confirmation to make sure that it's ready, totally ready to go. And I was hoping to release this October 1st. Um, I'm waiting for the book. The book could be delivered today. It could come tomorrow. So what I'm saying is this will be released this coming week at some point. Um, as soon as I get visual confirmation, I like to get a proof copy. They have these author proof copies. That's why there's a that gray stripe that says not for resale all the way across and across the back. But um, the let me go ahead and show you the picture. Here you go. This is the item we're talking about. This is the fan cap. It can be made, of course, in any team color or just your favorite colors. And um, let me show you something else that I'm doing. I, I've learned my lesson well. We have QR codes for both right-handed and left-handed. That's the right-handed. And I had to separate these so that when you, this is for the left-handed version for the video. I had to separate them out because if you have them too close together, you know, one for the right, excuse me, and one for the left side by side, the camera, your camera will get confused and not know which one you want. So I separated them. Like for example, this design, I have the right-handed version here, left-handed, right-handed, left-handed version there. So um, this is um, Bonnie's book of beginning crochet, everything you need to know to start crocheting today. I really, really, really believe it's everything you really need to know. It's not a huge book. It's not an encyclopedia. Um, as you know, and I know, you don't have to know everything about yarn. You don't have to know all 150 possible crochet abbreviations to learn how to read patterns. You don't need all of that. And if you ever run across something you don't know, you just look it up. I mean, right? Um, but as far as being able to make something like now, this book has everything you need to know. 
and it is going to be available in soft cover and there will also be hard covers available. They're a little bit more pricey because as you can imagine, they cost more to manufacture. They're going to be about $5 more. But if you're looking for a hard copy, you know, hard um, cover, those will also be available and it will also be available for the Kindle version once I figure out how to do that. Um, having some, some technical difficulties with Amazon on that right now. Um, so, but, um, let me see if there's anything else I can show you. There is 18, there are 18 patterns in here. Um, I, I do everything from showing you how to hold the yarn and explaining that, um, I talked a little bit about hooks. Of course I say my preferences, but encourage you to try both, show you how to hold the hook. And there's even a video that will show you what I'm writing about here in video format. So if you learn better with the visuals like I do, um, you can do that. Um, I even explain a yarn label, explain all the information. I, I didn't know that. There's somebody out there on my, I think there's a squirrel knocking on my door. <laughs> um, so I do talk about yarn weights and what they mean. Um, so I do give you some yarn information and there's some more information. So it's not like no information. It's just, it's just been distilled down to what you really need to know. Um, and then I start out with very basic projects. Like this is a single crochet, very basic pattern, which I think is a good pattern to start off with. And so what I've tried to do is arrange them in sequential order from easiest to a bit more challenging. Um, and then after you crochet, learn to crochet in rows, then you learn how to crochet in the round in the hat and making increases. Yeah, we jump right in. So once you learn to form your stitches, um, you know, and then it starts to go. And then the hat, I think is the fourth or fifth um, project, let's see in the book and it, you know, it picks up, it picks up. You learn how to do the ripple, how to do the corner to corner. Of course, you don't start there. You start at the beginning. Um, and it's easy headband, um, basket weave. Yes, I believe the basket weave is something a beginner can, you can learn. People think I'm crazy. Excuse me. I'm the girl who learned how to crochet. The very first thing I ever did was, um, was a granny square. Do you know how many skills you have to know to, to start with a granny square? That, I mean, that's like, it's like taking a person who's never, um, you know, learned how to swim and throwing them in the deep end. Um, but that's what, that's what the person who taught me did. And, um, so, so you're going to learn front and back post double crochets. I have that before you learn a granny square and the last and most difficult project I have in here would be the granny square vest. Okay. But I do go into a lot of detail. Um, the pattern is quite lengthy in this particular book. Um, but, but again, this is at the back of the book. I know there's going to be somebody who's going to, who's going to comment on this book and say, granny squares aren't really for beginners. Well, they're not, they're not. Um, but this book is designed to help you learn skills that every beginner is going to want to know. And people who, um, who see crochet, they, they see granny squares as the, um, you know, as the iconic thing to learn. And, and many are interested in learning that. And that's why I've included that. And I tried to include it with the videos to make it an easy learning process. There's also a pictorial stitch guide at the back of the book. So, uh, between the stitch, the, the, the visual stitch guide, which is several pages long, um, and all the many hours, it includes probably, probably more than, I would, I'm going to say 20 hours, but I don't want to give an hour reference, but um, a lot of hours of, of um, video instruction. Again, these are projects that have been on my YouTube channel for a while, they may be buried in the algorithm somewhere. And I figured I wanted to bring them back to life and I wanted to do something so that someone who's never, never heard of Bonnie Bay crochet and never heard of crochet can start somewhere. And I, I really, can you tell I'm excited about this? 
Um, and I'm really excited about the photography here. My son, um, Caleb, and his wife, Christy, it's Christy on the cover, um, helped tremendously with this. Um, so did my, Christy also helped me with the editing process, and my daughter, Becky, um, has been great with the editing process as well. So I, I depend on a lot of other people's eyes to, to find things that, that I would, would normally miss. So that, that is coming. I'm hoping to be, I'm hoping I can say this is going to be available Monday, but my next video that I release on YouTube will be about this book and it will be released the moment that this becomes live. So I want you all to know that. Um, and we are getting a package of some sort. All right. Yep. Yeah, FedEx just delivered something. Okay. All right, I'm gonna let that just go. Um, yeah, Love to Craft wants to know if I'm on my own today. Yeah, I am on my own. If you guys, I should have said this earlier, but if you see anything inappropriate, feel free to flag it and and do what you can. You can actually do that as a non-moderator, but yeah, Hannah is, um, Hannah is in South Carolina where they're getting Ian right now, and she just felt like she needed to stay with Grandma and didn't wanna, be distracted in case something suddenly blew in, you know, window blows in or something. She wanted to be there and um, I, it didn't, wouldn't have blessed her to have this responsibility today. So yeah, I'm, I'm flying solo, which is kind of weird. So I know the group, the group chat is probably not as, not as encouraging because she's not there to, to really put into it. But thanks for noticing that. Um, oh, cool. Um, Sienna Marie says, I love your patterns. Just made the Celtic throw. Love the Celtic stitch. Probably because I'm Irish. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm 33% Irish. <laughs> um, maybe that's why I love these things so much too. And I've been to your beautiful country and I, I could live there. I, I really could. I, I'm not moving there anytime soon. I, I could. If I had to, I could. And it would be my joy to do that. Um, and Archer says about the, uh, the Buster Keaton convention says, been around for years. I've never been, and it's creeping up on me. They're showing films and all kinds of fun stuff. Buster lived in, um, was it Muscogon, if I'm saying it right? Many years. Wow. Yeah, I have to, I have to, I have it written down, so I need to tell my kids as soon as I'm, I'm done, Terry. Um, oh, Jeannie, I'm so glad that you're home, um, and feeling better today. Um, you guys are so sweet. Um, wishing Terry, uh, Tracy, I'm sorry, Tracy, a happy birthday today. That's so great. And, um, thank you guys for your prayers. That is, that is so kind of you. And, um, Denise says she's going to Cape Hatteras. Ooh, yeah, that's in North Carolina. I, honey, I, I stopped by there on my honeymoon back in 1988. I've been there since, but anyway, yeah, that is so nice. It's a beautiful place. You probably don't want to go there today, though. <laughs> um, if I missed anybody's comments, I apologize in advance. I, like I said, I'm going solo, and if there's a, any, a question or anything, I am so sorry. Let me see. Let me just double check to make sure. Okay. I just want to make sure that I, I'm not missing something. We have Mandy in the chat. And, um, yeah, I answered that question, yeah, on the video. So I hope you heard what I said about that. Um, there is a video up on my channel, Mandy for the Hat. I've got so many things that the algorithm just kind of ignored during the years that I just didn't have really strong numbers. And so that's that's another reason why for the, for the beginner book is a lot of these, uh, you probably never have seen them. So it just seems crazy for a good design to just sit there um, just kind of being ignored because an algorithm didn't pick up on it when it was released or something. So, um, I figured it's okay to breathe some new life into it, but I do want to be upfront that these are not all brand new patterns. I just wanted to be totally clear about that to my, to my besties on the crochet in the crochet world here. Um, so you've heard me say that, <laughs> Um, the reason I say that is, is a, a friend of mine, a really, really sweet gal with um, Daisy Farms, they released a book and they got a pretty kind of a negative comment saying that, that they had hoped that it would be all new 
patterns, but they were kind of a collection that they put together of some things that they had released previously. And I just thought, well, there's really not a problem. I don't have a problem with that. I, I love books better than PDFs anyway. Um, but, but yeah, and I, I may be doing some more of that in the future. Um, I don't want to go into too many details, but I'm going to try to group things together because I know some people may just like making scarves and hats and I, I, I would like to do another leaflet on that. And, um, some people just like crochet sweaters. I know it sounds crazy. I know a lot of folks out there are terrified of making a sweater. Um, and that's where I try to make it a little bit easier and try to, and try to not just give you the, the hardcore numbers, but also try to give you confidence to, to, ex, to, to monkey with those numbers a little bit, for lack of a better way of saying it, especially with sweaters like this. I want you to make sure that they fit you and you can go by the numbers or you can take a favorite shirt or a favorite sweater that already fits you well and use that as your guide. Once you get to a certain point, you want it to make sure that it fits you, especially around here, bring out that sweater. And if your number, if the numbers that are in that pattern don't match, by all means, feel free to switch them up. You know, add more, you know, more space under the arms, which will in, you know, give you more uh, width, you know, across the bust area, wherever you would need it. And usually that's, you know, once you, you get that measurement down, then the rest of it is home free usually. So, and you do want to make something that fits you. So I know, I understand, uh, I understand the, the timidity there on doing that, but I just want to give you guys confidence and it's okay to, it's okay to make mistakes and, and learn as you go. Um, let's see. Oh, we have Wend from Myersville, Maryland. How cool. Welcome. Uh, another Marylander in the chat. That's great. Um, I'm broadcasting here from Gaithersburg, Maryland. So I need to look up Myersville and see how far that is away. Um, yeah, Denise, let's see. Yeah, I read that comment. Uh, I'm going back down again. Oh, thank you, Susan, for your prayer. She said, I've been praying for everyone in Ian's path. Two of my grandchildren and my two great-grandchildren live in Central Florida. All is well with them, thank the Lord. Yeah, thank, thank God, Susan. I mean, a lot of the pictures that I saw, too, was right along the coast. And, and whenever a storm is right along the coast, that's where the, most of the damage is going to be. But you never know. These things could just barrel right all through and, and, and wreak havoc. You just don't know. But I, I am glad your family is okay. Um, oh, thank you, Denise. She says she likes the shawl. Um, and Sherry, thank you so much. Yeah. And, um, yeah, Carrie says she likes the color wear, the shawl. Talking about, talking about this shawl again. Yeah, and, and they have a lot of different colorways in the, you know, in these cakes. And if you don't want to use the self-changing yarn, you can make this a, um, a stash buster. You can even upgrade to like a, a number four. If you do, I would upsize your hook so that your stitches are bigger, so there's some, you know, some drapiness to it. Um, you could just use, you know, leftover yarn and just, you know, combine them in the colors that you want. I, I, I may have to do that. I, I found a drawer full of, of extra yarn that I had upstairs near where I record, and I brought that down, and I'm going to sort it all out. I may just put it in a make me into a shawl category or a stash busting kind of a project. See, do I have anything else? To, I do have something else to show you. Um, thank you, Sherry, for your prayers. And okay, Jane wants to know when the shawl is going to be released. Let me look at my calendar. I'll bring that up again. Uh, when did I, hold on a second. Let me see where did I put it. Give me a minute to read my my notes here. The 24th of October. So it will be October 24th. Let me show you another project that's going to be coming out before then. This is going this is scheduled for October 10th. This is an asymmetrical shawl. Let me show you. It has the large braided um, cable. It has ribbing, low front, low front, uh, yeah, the, the low front stitch, 
and we ha it has Celtic leaf. And I used some really interesting colors, that, uh, kind of a color, a colorway. So, so when you wear this and you wrap it around, so you really do get a more of an even distribution of the colors. Probably hard to tell because the color of sweater I'm wearing is very similar. You can wear it as a you know as a big chunky scarf, and you can wear it also as a shawl. This is the yarn um, that I got from a gal. She's from Utah. I met her. Where did I meet her? I met her in Colorado, in Loveland, Colorado, at the Inter Reef Conference. And this is the really nice yarn. I mean. This is, this is the kind of a project when you don't want to spare any expense. Of course, you can use whatever yarn you want, but the yarn that I use is the one that has the, the um, merino, superwash merino mixed with yak and silk. So it is, it is not for the faint of heart as far as budgetary concerns go. I mean, this, this is the price of your yarn. I'm going to go ahead and just say it. But the reason I, I, I use this yarn, I really like the combination. It's soft it's strong. The silk will always make yarn stronger. It gives it a nice sheen and and the yak adds softness and just a unique way that the fiber takes the dye. So I just, I, I enjoyed the yarn that I got from Banshee Fiber Art Studio um, with the Eileen shawl. And so I was somewhere else and I was telling somebody about this yarn and she said, I've got some of that and that's where I got this from. So we collaborated on this. And um, so that will be coming, I'll put my glasses back on. That will be coming, um, this is October, scheduled for October 10th release. So if you're interested, uh, I don't have the video. Well, the video will have information for, for the yarn. Um, and the name of the company is Greenwood, Greenwood Company. I'll have to look it up and I'll try to include that. I'll put that link in the video description below once I am done with the live. So in case you're interested in getting kits, I, I do believe that the yarn is available. Actually, let me go ahead and try to do that. Let me go ahead and try to do that now. Greenwood Fiber Works. Okay, let me go ahead and... I'm just going to go ahead and put the link right here in the live. Okay, in case anybody's interested. I know I know Swati had been asking about that. And let's see. Let me see what else do I have coming. I'm just showing these to you because once I get on once I once I get on the plane, I'm not going to be able to show these to you should I get to do uh, you know, a live from there. And I'm I I'm, I'm going to try. Okay, on the 14th. Okay, I should be back before then. But um, the 14th of November, I've got something really special coming. I'm calling this the, the Tyrian, like T-Y-R-I-N, as in, as in the city of Tyre. Um, from, from the scriptures, they talk about the city of, of uh, Tyre. That's where Lydia was from. She was a dyer of purple yarns, and that's where the Tyrian name comes from. Okay. This is both a shoulder wrap and a cowl. And I'm using some beautiful yarn. This is a DK weight. It features the, the wheat, the large wheat cable, and a lace, a lace design. Let me go ahead and bring it up closer. And the way this works, let me see if it'll fit with my sweater. It might might be a little resistant, but so the way this works is you can make the circumference whatever your measurement is. So you would make the cable as long as you need, and then as long as the the number of stitches around is a multiple of four to to work. Is it four or six? Well, anyway, it's in the pattern. And, and you can wear this, you know, both as a, a shoulder wrap, you know, when you get a little chilly, or you can wear it as a cowl. And with the, the amount of um, silk in this, it's, it's, I believe this is 50% silk. So 
that is why the dye looks the way it does. It's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful kind of yarn. So this, I know I'm going to wear this, this, this winter, this is going underneath my, I'll probably wear it more as a cowl than I will as a shoulder wrap. But you know, once you get inside and you take off your coat and if there's a little bit of a chill, you can just pour it, you know, pull it down, you know, over your shoulders for a little bit of warmth. So, and, and yeah, and this, this, the variegated uh, color is, is because of the components, you know, what the yarn is made of and just the way it just took the dye. And I just love it. And this is from the same lady who um, made the Yak yarn. She's here local in Columbia, Maryland. And that's the Banshee Fiber, Banshee Fiber Studio. Anyway, she's the same person that provided the yarn or where I bought the yarn actually um, for the Eileen shawl. So this is coming, I'll give you that date again. This is coming the 14th of November. If you are a watch subscriber, all of these patterns that I showed you are gonna be available before I leave the country. So if you want early access to these patterns, um, consider becoming a watch subscriber. What's a watch subscriber? Um, there's a, a web, my, the site for that is watch, W-A-T-C-H dot bonniebaycrochet.com. It is a paid subscriber channel. Um, it is $6.95 a month. There's a discount if you subscribe for the year. And you have access to a lot of complimentary patterns that um, are normally patterns that I sell in my love craft stores to, to people who are not um, subscribers. And you get to watch the content um, commercial free and without, you know, it's spam free, commercial free uh, viewing. And there's no tracking of your viewership. Um, and I will never sell your information to any company, no matter what they offer me. And people have. And I'm not like, nope, move right along. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Um, so I just want to let you know that if you're looking for a more private place to, you know, to do your video online um, viewership, that that is something to consider. Plus, it supports um, my family and me. It helps us to generate, you know, content so that I don't have to do substitute teaching anymore. Thank you, guys. Um, so that that's a big plus. It helps me to to make investments. Let me show you an investment besides the yarn. This is something that I got just yesterday, and I'm really, really excited about using it. I bought, I don't know if you know what this is. Um, this is, let me go here. This is a microscope, and I'm gonna be looking at yarn fibers, and I'm gonna get down in geeky in all about yarn very soon in the video series. And, and just by, by your kind support and, and purchasing patterns and whatnot, you know, I'm able to buy tools like this so that I can make better educational videos. And I'm just, I feel like a kid because um, what's nice about this microscope is I can take pictures and record what I'm looking at as I try to explain instead of trying to find an old picture online somewhere, which I don't like to do. I like to generate my own material. I'm going to go ahead and put that back. So, um, anyway, sorry to get so sales pitchy. That's not my intent. I, I'm just very passionate, um, about, about this craft and making sure that it, it continues and goes on and on and on. And, and like with this, and getting back to this, this particular project, if you can't afford, you know, fancy your yarn, that's okay. Get out the acrylics, get out the cotton. I actually made the prototype in a cotton material that is available at Walmart, Michaels, you know, uh, any store that would carry the big box yarn. So um, this is again number three weight yarn. So you know you don't have to you don't have to break the bank on any of this stuff. Um, but I just I just offer that for those who who want to expand their knowledge, who want to make something that's you know, could it be really nice? Um, and, and again, I am on my, I'm on an educational journey too, uh, learning about the yarns. I, I feel like a novice in so many ways, but um, I, I am going to kick it into the next gear and we're going to understand on a molecular level, not a molecular level, but on a, 
a microscopic level, what is the difference? Why is this yarn so soft and why is this yarn so abrasive? Well, we're going to look at it. We're going to, we're going to figure this thing out. Um, so anyway, let me go ahead now that I got all that taken care of. Um, and again, if I don't get to your comment, I am so sorry. Uh, so I did get Jane, Jane's comment on when that is released. And Artrenace um, wanted to know, is that the Tweedy yarn? Um, I don't know if you're talking about this yarn. I talked about so much here. But um, yeah, this is, I guess, kind of Tweedy. I don't know if you, I'm not sure that camera can focus. Well, maybe it will on, on this. But yeah, it has these little pieces of Donegal, like little pieces of fluff in it. And they, they it's held up. <laughs> It's held up. I have I have ripped it all out twice, not all all, but a lot of it. So uh, let's see. Huh? Yes. Um, Tracy says that Leather Company has also has a monthly sub box that's fantastic, gorgeous hooks too. Yes, Tracy. I'm so glad you said that. Um, if you are looking for a super duper. Uh, special gift uh, for a crochet friend, um, Leather Company, uh, the her husband. I mean, it's a husband wife team, a young couple, very wonderful people. Um, I got to meet them both at the CGOA conference in New Orleans this summer. Really, really sweet people, and he carves these amazing crochet hook handles. Um, you can have. Um, and I believe he, he uses the metal handles and then adds, I don't know, you have to look at the, their page and take a look at what is available. I was very much smitten by those. I didn't purchase any because my muscle memory is just so, so set with this kind of a handle and hook. For those of you who are new to my channel, I'm a Susan Bates girl. And the Susan Bates soft handles like this um, with the inline the inline hook. If you get my book, I'll explain what that's all about. I do show a, an inline hook versus um, the tapered hooks, which are kind of like the B-O-Y-E boy brand. Um, but I'm, a, I'm an inline Susan Bates kind of girl. Um, and this, this type of handle is just, you know, I don't even have to think about what I'm doing with this in my hand. If I put a, a bigger object even if it's cushy in my hand, it, it tends to distract me and get in my way and slow me down. So that's the only reason why I didn't bring home a box of these hooks. But those of you who have no problem with that, definitely take a look at his, his page. And the woods are beautiful. I, I can't even explain them in words. You have to just check it out. So thelethercompany.com. And again, tell them Bonnie sent you. Um, I, I would love, you know, love to see them do well. And Love to Craft says, um, that yarn matches your nails. Ah, it does today. <laughs> um, yeah. I use, let, let, let me show you something else. Hold on a second. I wasn't planning on doing this. Um, this, this does not benefit me financially in any way, shape, or form. But if I can help out a friend, I will. And let me show you, you guys may like, how, how do you do that to your nails? Um, it's been on about a week now, but these are the Color Street Nail Strips. Have you ever seen these? This is the company and this is the brand. They're not cheap. I'll just say that up front. But I get two uses out of these. But compared to, let's say, getting a manicure, these are really cheap. <laughs> uh, so I get two uses out of what would traditionally be one pack. And so if you ever see some really sparkly, fun design nails. I don't paint them all. I, I just use these and this is really cool. I'm going to change to this very soon. It just reminds me of the candy corn <laughs> for the holidays. I'll probably, I'm probably going to go on my trip with these. Um, and I'll, I'll take some extras with me, um, so that I can redo it whenever it's time, but I'm going to go ahead and, and let me see. Um, let me, let me put I will put a link in the video description. There's a, a girl named Kristen with a K and her last name starts with a B. Um, but I'll put her link in my video description. 
So in case any of you want to, you know, um, order some of these from her, again, they're not cheap. They're like, um, I'll just say they're not cheap. I'll let you take a look if you're interested. But um, just know that, that if you do purchase any of these, that it's supporting a young mom of three children. And, um, and, and I know that it would really help their family. So uh, I'll put that in at the end. Let me, let me write that down. So what I'm going to do that. I have to put notes down because my brain does not remember diddly squat anymore. One for less. I wouldn't know <laughs> what to do. All right. Um, Oh, we have Carlene Roberts. She says, good morning, received and loved your books. Oh, I'm so glad that the U.S. Post Office is on their game, Carlene. Yay. Um, and and Katie Ja, is that right? She says, hello, thank you for taking your time to do this. Ah, my joy. Hey, Brenda. My sister's in the chat. Says, hello, everyone. A moment to say hi. Hannah, are you and Grandma okay? Well, Hannah's not in the chat today. She's taken the day off so that she can be there to monitor everything during the storm, Brenda, because the wind is, was kicking up pretty hard um, before before I went live. Um, I do see some more some more questions here, which er, if I didn't get to your question, please feel free to email me, bonniebay at me.com. Um, and I'll be glad to answer your question. Oh, we have Maria from Chile. Well, welcome. Um, that is so great. Um, oh, yes, Carlene. She said, it's great that you introduced us to Indie Yarn, Indie Yarn Dyers. Absolutely. There are a lot of good ones out there. And, and these are people that I've met personally, and I can vouch for them. So I, I, you know, I'm always looking for opportunities. If I see yarn at conferences, that just really catches my eye. Um, and, and there are thousands and thousands upon thousands of hanks at conferences. Sometimes it's just a blur. Um, but if I see something that draws me in and, and I talk with the people and they're, I mean, I don't go around saying, I'm so-and-so, you got to talk with me. I don't know. I, I, I just like to get a feel as a regular person what they're like. And, and um, if they're really cordial and, you know, seems like someone I'd want to introduce to you, those are the people that I try to bring um, to my channel. And Carlene says, I've never done an asymmetrical shawl. Um, looks full of texture. I love blues and greens. Yeah, asymmetrical shawls are so much fun. I actually prefer them <laughs> because I can wrap them and I can do a lot of different things. And um, if you're looking for an interesting video, Carlene, check out, uh, I forget the name of it, but there's one on styling shawls on my channel um, with Laura from... Um, <gasps> From Jewel Designs, J U L Designs, and she is the expert on a million different ways you can wear a shawl. So definitely check that out, um, and you'll want to have some asymmetricals as well as regular shawls in your wardrobe, just so that you can, you know, pull from them and, and as you're getting ready to go out that door when it's cold. Oh, thank you guys for your comments. Um, I was just checking to make sure I'm not missing a, a question. Oh, thank you, Jane. She says, I love the watch channel. Can't wait for those patterns to make for Christmas gifts. Thank you, Bonnie. My pleasure, Jane. Thank you. Thank you all for, for your extreme support there. Um, and Tracy says, I guarantee it will be the best $6.95 you've ever spent. Worth every penny. And thank you, Tracy. And gosh, I sound like I'm on such a... I, I, I'm going to be done in just a second. But one thing to compare it to, I know when you look at things online and you're like, oh, that's too much. And I've had people tell me, you know, they didn't want to pay $1.99 for a pattern. And I'm like, that's fine. But these are the same people who will go through Starbucks and spend $15 on, you know, um, a cup of coffee and a bagel and a pastry or something that's going to be gone in about 20 minutes. So, you know, I always like to use the Starbucks analogy, $6.95. That won't even pay for your coffee and a bagel at, at Starbucks. That um, it can do so much more online, and it's not just not just me, but you know a lot of other things too. You know that that would really be beneficial. But um, I, I like to to think that I give value back, and um, if you like to purchase the pattern, you know usually the cost of one or two patterns is is more 
than than the cost per month. And, and I understand that's if you like the patterns. I totally get that. Um, but just to let you know that with this this um, membership, you know, does come you know, the availability of a lot of different patterns. And there's also content um, there that like this sweater, for example. Um, this is a complimentary uh, pattern and video. This video is not on my public channel. I have several, actually a whole book full of design videos that are on the watch channel that are not on the public channel and will not be on the public channel uh, because I like to preserve some of my work um, from copycats and from, um, from downright thieves. Yes, I've had problems with that. I'm not going to talk about that though. This is a happy day. Um, yeah, thanks, Tracy. I guess you're excited about learning about yarn. I am too. I've got these two really thick books about it. And I again, I'm going to try to distill it down for you. I'm not going to do all yarns that, you know, like, for example, one, one, my first, my first attempt, my first video is to try to explain the difference between wool and superwash wool. What's the difference? What does it look like? How does superwash wool, how is that different from regular wool? Are they both the same softness? Um, is all wool scratchy? Um, a lot of questions. Is all wool the same? Does all wool come from the same breed of sheep? Obvious answer, no. <laughs> it can be as different as, you know, hair from dogs, from one dog to another. So lots and lots of questions to delve into with this, and I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, thank you, Susan McKnight. She says, each of those items you showed us are gorgeous. Oh, thank you. And Lynn, how can I forget Lynn? Lynn, so good to have you in the chat as always. So encouraging. Um, and do I have a link for wooden hooks? Charlotte wants to know. Uh, look at the Lether. I'll put it in the chat here again. It's the leathercompany.com. It's the same company where I got this gorgeous yarn from. The woman dyes the yarn, the man makes the hooks. I mean, and they, I was gonna say he makes hooks for both inline and tapered version with the fancy handles. So whatever, whatever type hook like you prefer, he has a hook to help you. Well, I have gone way over today and uh, I'm supposed to go walking with a friend at two o'clock, but it's starting to cloud up here. I don't know if we'll get the walk in or not, but um, I wanted to read you something. This is from my book by Mr. Spurgeon. Um, it's called Morning and Evening. For those of you who have never heard of Mr. Spurgeon, he was a 19, I'm sorry, a 19th century um, preacher in London. Um, and amazing guy, amazing guy. Uh, he suffered much, but he was so in doubt, just so in doubt with just grace, 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 grace. And I just love his reading. So this is an interesting, an interesting read. It's a little on the long side, but I'm going to go ahead and just delve into it. Um, and it has to do with a verse from Leviticus 13, 13. And that verse says, behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. Now, this is in regards to the Levitican um, rules and regulations and so forth. But let me go ahead and just read. It, it, is, it is a bit, but I'm going to just read and hopefully it will be understood. Strange enough, this regulation appears, yet there is wisdom in it. For the throwing out of the disease proved that the Constitution was sent. This morning... It may be well for us to see the typical teaching of so singular a rule. We too are lepers and may read the law of leper as applicable to ourselves. When a man sees himself to be altogether lost and ruined, covered all over with the defilement of sin and no part free from pollution, when he disclaims all righteousness of his own and pleads guilty before the Lord, then is he clean through the blood of Jesus and the grace of God. Hidden, unfelt, unconfessed iniquity is the true leprosy. But when sin is seen and felt, it has received its death blow. And the Lord looks with eyes of mercy upon the soul afflicted with it. Nothing is more deadly than self-righteousness, 
or more hopeful than contrition. We must confess that we are nothing else but sin, for no confession short of this will be the whole truth. And if the Holy Spirit be at work with us, convincing us of sin, there will be no difficulty about making such an acknowledgement. It will spring spontaneously from our lips. What comfort does the text afford to those under a deep sense of sin? Sin mourned and confessed, however black and foul, shall never shut a man out from the Lord Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Whosoever cometh unto him, he will in no wise cast out. Though dishonest as the thief, though unchaste as the woman who was a sinner, though fierce as Saul of Tarsus, though cruel as Manasseh, though rebellious as the prodigal, the great heart of love will look upon the man who feels himself to have no soundness in him and will pronounce him clean. When he trusts in Jesus crucified, come to him then, poor heavy laden sinner, come needy, come guilty, come loathsome and bare. You can't come too filthy, come just as you are. I, I was just, just so affected by that when I read it yesterday, and it's just so true. Uh, so I hope that really blessed you, especially if you're struggling with something or you know, feeling your inadequacy. Welcome to the club. It's a good place to be. Well, love you guys, and hopefully see you next week. God bless.